Adobe Express has AI art generation tools that you can really use in novel ways to get your students to think deeply about some of the things that they're studying. So I'm going to give you an example lesson today. This one's a senior English project I used to do, but um, you'll see that a lot of the tools that you use and the, the ideas behind them will work in just about any grade level and just about any content area. So to start with, you're going to log into Adobe Express, and I've got a video that you can go visit if you uh, need to know how to log in. Once you're here in the login screen, you're going to go down and we're going to go to, uh, we're going to go find the text to image section. Okay, it's always going to be the seahorse. It's a good way to tell the kids how to get to it. So we're going to go ahead and click on the seahorse. What that's going to do is it's going to bring up the text to image tool and it will actually have the seahorse in here because it's trying to, to it's giving you the example that if you type in a seahorse with a colorful coral garden, intricate detail, uh, it will give you artwork that matches that. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this text with something else. Now, let me show you what the assignment would be for the students here. So um, I, I did this based off the old MTV show Cribs where uh, you would see famous people's uh, houses and what they've done to them. And so the idea here is that Beowulf, the, the main character, uh, you are going to be the decorator for his crib. Uh, and in the original assignment, I had them pick three objects from the story that they would place in the room. Um, to show off uh, what Beowulf thought he was all about. And that they could either, uh, in the old days, had had it where they could either make a digital diorama or a physical one, and they had to pick three objects and do a description of why they chose them for Beowulf's crib. So let's go back, uh, now that we've seen what we're working on. The first thing the students need to do is to get a picture of Beowulf's trophy room, and that's going to take a little, little work with the students to do some review. And in this case, uh, if they've done some review, they'll know that that's a mead hall. So I'm going to tell it that I want a... Anglo-Saxon Mead Hall. This is probably the first thing the students will type in. So we let the generative AI go, and it's going to think for a minute, and it's going to give us an Anglo-Saxon Mead Hall, or at least its idea of what an Anglo-Saxon Mead Hall would look like. Now remember, this is being uh, created using all the stock imagery that Adobe has. And you'll notice we get one here, but, but this is one of a series that we could pick through. And all these are pretty decent. Uh, not exactly what an Anglo-Saxon meat hall would look like, but close enough. Now, the problem, of course, is the students were looking for the inside, uh, and now they're getting the outside. So the first thing this is telling them is that detail is important when we're giving descriptions about things. And that's something that, as an English teacher, we are always concerned with. So now I tell them, well, that's pretty good, but now you've got to go and you've got to get the interior of this. So they'll have to now go back and rethink this and say, uh, and the interior of an Anglo-Saxon meat hall. So now I get the new uh, the new images. Oh, that one's okay. That one's got some promise. Mm, pretty good, but the walls are too busy. Okay, so some of these are okay, but none of them really I like. That's why I like this tool down here that says load more. That will just force it to come up with some more images based on this same prompt. Okay, so here's our new set of images. Pretty good, pretty good. Ooh, I like that one. That one's not bad either. We could use either of those. Mm, not so much on that one. So, um, you know what? I think I like this one because I've got some room right here. I can put something. I've got some room here and then some space uh, on the floor as well. I could even do some things over here with this junk on the wall over here too. So, this is the one I'm going to go with. Um, at this point, the students have a blank slate, and they're going to use some other tools uh, that are AI art driven. So the first thing I want to do is um, I'm going to say that the two objects I want are I want a shield because that represents Beowulf protecting his people. And then we'll try to do the head of Grendel's mom, the monster that he fought. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I can actually z click on this photo and I can zoom in. And look at this wall because this is where we want to put uh, let's put our shield right here so I'm gonna click over away from this text to image tool so I'll hit the X there now I'm back on the basic drawing tools I'm gonna have to recenter and I'm gonna pick a generative fill okay because generative fill will let me decide uh, an area and then tell it what I want in that area so it won't change the whole picture so I'm going to draw a nice round area right here for where I want my shield. And then I'm going to describe exactly what I want. I want an 
Anglo Saxon shield, or uh, round shield. Okay, in fact, I'm going to change that a little bit because I bet it will do better if I say a Viking round shield. Okay, with red and blue colors. Let's see what it gives us. So it's going to think for a minute in that area. And so now we get a couple uh, of ideas. Uh, that one's okay. That one's weird. That one's pretty good. I could even go in with generative fill if I wanted to and, and make it finish that uh, that wooden cross mark. Um, again, not the best art in the world, but that's not the point here. The point is for us to just to describe it. Okay, so there's one. Uh, now, I could try to put, let's try to put Grendel's mom's head over here. Okay, so let's do another round area. Okay, and I'm going to say a stuffed green monster's head. Uh, that one's funny. That, that one's like a cartoon. And that one's, none of these are great. I would probably want to generate a few more. You notice you have to load more. But uh, let's go for this one. Okay. Finally, uh, if I wanted to do a third, I could actually come down here. Uh, and and let's say I want a pile of gold rings right here, or gold coins, because it was always important for Anglo-Saxon kings to give out gold to their followers. Now, the brush is a little too big here. So watch this. I can go up to the top and actually reduce the brush size. And so now I can do a little triangle there and say, uh, give me a pile of gold coins. Let's do rings. Actually, rings is more Anglo-Saxon. Okay. Hmm. Took me literally there and made single rings. Aha! Wow, that's exactly what I was looking for. So, well, I like this one. So, we're going to go with that one and we're going to say done. So, now we've got our finished picture with our three items that we drew in. Again, the students will probably want to refine that more. Uh, and they certainly can. They can keep adding and keep uh, detailing it. Um, but that is the basics of using the generative fill and the images uh, from words. So once the students are done, there's a number of ways they can turn this into you. Probably the easiest is to download this uh, and share it to you. The best way to do that is to create an assignment in Canvas where they turn in a file and then they can just turn in that PNG picture file. But that's just one idea of how you can use the generative fill and other AI art tools uh, to help your students learn to describe things and think about setting and character description. Thank you.